whole lot of mistakes that happen with these kids because they're not managing their intensity level. It's so important. I learned this from Jim Lair, the sports psychologist who started researching this back in the mid 80s. The resting pulse is almost half of what we need to energize and intensify our athletic foundation and get it firing on all cylinders. These kids sometimes don't realize they're just under energized and that's what's making them drag their first step, a little slow on recovery. Work the feet now, work them a little bit harder. And when the game is so fast, those balls are changing ends from baseline to baseline at the pro level just at one second. That means you have one second to read, react, get into position and strike the ball. One second. You're attacking with disregard of how you're de defending if it comes back. And then you stretch yourself out on a cross-court approach. Now, you can't sit there and admire that shot. The moment it leaves your strings, you already have to have a built-in recovery. So that means you're already landing in a position if you're wide in the court that allows you to come back in as short amount of time as possible. And remember, one extra step off the court is a two-step error because you have to make that step up coming back. And in increments of one second, you don't have any time in there. So here at the academy, what we're working on is how to get these kids to understand, first of all, what their athletic foundation is all about. You know, I ask the kids, are you an athlete? They say, yeah, we're athletes. I'm like, no, not now you aren't. You're a potential athlete. The moment you get up and establish athletic foundation, that's how we engage our body into becoming an athlete. And the challenge on the tennis court is really more similar to a Formula One car where you have to make quick jerky moves, sharp change of directions, stopping on a dime and reversing and going back. I mean, you need something that's built similar to a Formula One car, very low to the ground, and when, a, when possible, a wider base, particularly on reaction. Much wider are the pro's feet relative to their shoulders than the average juniors out there. So I'm telling these juniors, hey, you know, get your feet spread out. That's going to help you get down and settle in and get more comfortable. It creates more of the pressure into the hips and takes it away from right above the kneecaps that gets you so tired so quickly. So, you know, we've got to learn this position. Posture is so huge. You've got to come into that arena like a gladiator, chest up, shoulders back, and position that posture rock solid. That is so important and so underemphasized in our sport. You need posture that's so strong because those shoulder mechanics are pivoting to create the power. And what are they pivoting on? They're pivoting on an axis that's created by the strong postured foundation. When that foundation's weak and flimsy, everything built on top of it's weak and flimsy as well. What we teach these kids about the statistics that we see coming from the top players. Forced errors is by far the dominant category in terms of the outcomes. You take a Grand Slam event, you look at all the points that were played, the greatest number of outcomes in, of points are forced errors. And that I interpret to mean our objective, our challenge physically, is to get ourselves to be as resistant to getting forced as possible. It's simple science. And we can emulate those qualities. And when you start to realize that when I engage and apply this athletic foundation like this, any movement-based sport shares almost identical technique qualities. First step reactions, the crossovers and the shuffle combinations, change of direction, some sort of built-in recovery type of move. Because it's all about attacking and defending. You can attack, most kids understand the attack side. They don't always appreciate enough the, the value of good defending. P being positioned in the center of possibility so your opponent has no open court. Never giving anything away, never giving open court away. That's the key thing to me that brings all these points together and on the same page. And here at the academy, we're using a lot of the AP belt stuff uh, with these kids to try to heighten their awareness to their foundation. First thing people see when they see that belt at work, they're going, well, I see players leaving the ground a whole lot. We don't attach the player to the ground. That player is attached between the ankle and the tailbone. One court gives and takes as necessary. It's about the relationship between the heels and the tailbone, keeping that flex in there. You can have foundation 10 feet off the ground. Okay, They find a foundation position off the ground, and they can torque their body and create moves in midair 
because of that foundation. So foundation in the belt is trying to keep your body compact even when you leave the ground. For example, one of the moves we're working on with them here is how to properly elevate for a split. So I've taught the kids what I call the bounce. Bounce, 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 bounce. Notice I'm doing it all with my feet right now in this foundation. These angles are staying intact. They're not changing. Most kids, when they first see me do that, interpret that move as this. That's going from athletic to unathletic to athletic, unathletic, by my definition. So it's all about understanding what that foundation is, how to engage it, and eventually, how do we defend those qualities against the forces of attack that are coming from the other side of the net? And remember, the pros make the game look a lot more smooth, fluid, and effortless than the rest of us. That should be the direction you should all be searching in. I see a lot of kids on these courts out here searching for the right stylish action that's going to give them the feel of the forehand or backhand or whatever they're hitting. And the problem is, they're throwing everything in the kitchen sink into the ball. So they never, first of all, can do it twice in a row the same way. So if they're not consistent, the results aren't going to be consistent. And so I'm trying to get them to look to do as little as they have to do. Kids are already way more complicated than they need to be. We need to simplify, get more efficient in everything we do on the tennis court, not just with the swing path. And if, if we think this way, we'll be building tennis athletes out of these guys and not just tennis players. Nice shot. You want to be in control of this flow of energy in there. When it's up a little high, get yourself down as quickly as you can. And then when you're about to start the next point and you need to react quickly, you start to get the feet active again to start building it back up. And let's pair off as much as we can and do one-on-one -on -one with these belts, okay?